Hello, everyone. We are in another lesson. The people sin against God. Now, this lesson is really extensive and it's really deep. And when we finish today, I would hope that you can finish reading chapter 32. Also, it brings a lot home to us and it shows God's attitude towards sin. In God, there's no little sin, there's no big sin. Sin is sin, and sin is death. Sin is from the body, not the body from sin. So that's why the body is judged where sins live. The people sin against God. Now what is occurring? We were reversing where God is now taking his people to another level of his instruction to tell them how to worship him in spirit and in truth. So let's look at this introduction as we get into this lesson. In chapter 32, we're going to, of Exodus, we find the golden calf. And this was done by the children of Israel. When they thought Moses was not going to return from the mountain because he had been delayed. So Moses had left Aaron, his brother, in charge of the people. And this is an important thing to know. Aaron had been left in charge of the people by Moses, which means that anything came up, the people were supposed to talk to Aaron. Now here is what happened to Aaron. And this mostly in next week's lesson. Aaron became and was a weak leader. He was supposed to be directing the people to keep them from sinning. But the people's murmuring and complaining started directing Aaron. Aaron started doing what the people wanted him to do instead of Aaron correcting the people from doing what God did not want him to do. And we're going to see what that led to next week. God, the people sin against God. In chapter 32 of Exodus, the goal of calf, that's a false God. And that was as a result of Aaron not doing what he was instructed to do by Moses. When God put people in charge, they're supposed to do the will of God, not the will of people. And when the will of people is done, instead of the will of God, devastation and destruction happen. So if you are in a leadership position, and you're not doing the will of God, and you're doing the will of the people, you are causing death on yourself and those people because of sin. We need to look at the word apostasy. Apostasy is a word when people turn away from the instructions and dictates of God. We find that apostasy is an abandonment of the teachings of God for something else. When you abandon the teachings of God for something else, it's called apostasy. And that's what the children of Israel was creating, apostasy. They was taking false God. Apostasy also includes false teachers, false religion, and worship, uh, worship all today, false preachers. We find in this chapter that God judges sin without exception. One of the things we find today, the sin is not mentioned very often in the church sermon. We have to know what sin is in order to avoid sin. God judges sin. Sin brings death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. How would you know what sin is unless it is taught? God brought a severe judgment on his people, as he said he would, because they violated the blood of office that they swore to God. You violate your oath to God, your penalty will be severe. This shows that the church, the body of Christ, will be under a greater condemnation if any member 
violated the body of Christ. Paul said to the church at Corinth. Notice, he said to the church at Corinth, which is the Corinthian church, that if any man defile that temple, which is the body of Christ, the church is the body of Christ, it says him God will destroy. So we need to pay attention to those things because as Paul said to us in Corinthians, these things were written that we may understand the will of God. The children of Israel have been freed from Egypt, brought through the wilderness, defeated the Amalekites, fed meat in the wilderness, given water to drink in the desert, and led to their homeland door by God. All this had been done by God through Moses. Yet at this, step, at this point, they declared that they had been abandoned. They declared this. Why? Moses was called up to God. They knew Moses had been called up to God. They didn't know how long God was going to keep Moses there. And they knew where Moses was. But yet, the time that God kept Moses talking to him, they felt like they had been abandoned. They, some probably even thought that Moses had been killed. They're totally forgetting about who brought them out of Egypt. After they have been begging for 400 years for relief. God brought them out. How soon did they forget? How soon do we forget the word of God? Since Moses had been gone for so long, we're going to look at this now. Let's, let's get right into the lesson. 32 and 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed, delayed, to come down out of the mountain. Now, when he delayed, they had, no doubt, attributed a time that Moses should return. But when he had not returned, they considered that as a delay. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Now, Aaron, remember, was the one that God says will be in charge of the camp while I'm gone. So the people brought themselves to the leader in charge of the camp and said unto him, complaining unto him, complaining unto, unto the one who was in charge, make us gods which shall go before us. As for Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, he wouldn't, what would become of him? Notice this. The people went to the leader. Start complaining. And guess what? The leader should have at that point said what he needed to say to correct their erroneous behavior. But he didn't. But he didn't. Let's look at this. Since Moses had been gone for so long, they did not think he was going to come back. I thought that he may have even been killed. See, Aaron should have corrected them by saying, God's time is God's time. Moses will come back when God has finished communicating with him. But Aaron didn't. And here's what they wanted to do. They wanted to make a idol gods, idol gods, G-O-D-S, small g, to lead them on their march. Now they wanted false gods to lead them on their march when it's the one true God who brought them out of Egypt. Now they were referring to a desire to have False God, the God that did, did not exist, they fell into idolatry. Church, we need to understand, if you turn from God, you have the possibility of falling into idolatry. Aaron did not try to stop them. He went along with the people. As a leader, when people are complaining, about what they should not be complaining about, and you start listening to them, you are enhancing a, a subordinating their sin. Aaron, listen to the people. He went along with the people, wanting to return to idolatry. You know, it shows leadership that is weak. Let the complainers lead. That's a weak leader. Let the complainers control the situation. 
which should not have been allowed to be done by Aaron. But he did. He let the complainers take charge of him. The people were determined to have a God made for them as a leader. They were determined to have a God made for them a leader against God's will. When God's placed people in leadership, it is a will that you stand there for him. But when you turn aside by listening to complainers, you are going against God's will. And as a result of that, you are digging in on the sins of the people as well as yourself. So we need to understand that when you're placed in a position, you're placed in a position by God. And you're supposed to turn aside any complaints that come before you. Verse 2 and 3. And Aaron said unto them, now this is Aaron talking back to him. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings that's in your ear, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them into me. Aaron said, bring all your gold you got. Bring it to me. Instead of turning aside their complaints that God has placed him there until Moses returned, he went along with the people. And all the people break off the golden earrings. And they brought them to Aaron. Now, back in Egypt, these things represented false gods, false deities. That's what happened. And Genesis 35 and 4 says, it shows that earrings were a sign that people were serving the gods of Egypt. Earrings were a sign that people were serving the gods of Egypt. That's in Genesis 35 and 4. Now they were to bring these earrings to Aaron at his instruction. Now, isn't that something? Now Aaron is supposed to be doing just the opposite. But he's feeding into their complaints. He's feeding into their complaints. Leaders should not feed into complaints of people or anyone that they're over and responsible for. You should not have been placed in that position. Each person that had them were instructed to bring them to Aaron. They brought him to Aaron. This is the first time that a collection of jury was taken or given. All the people did as they were instructed and brought the golden earrings to Aaron. It represented the serving of Egyptian false gods. And Aaron is right in the middle of it. Aaron instructed them to bring these symbols against what he knew God did not want to allow. Verse 4, 5, and 6. And he received them at their hands, meaning that they put in their hands and brought it to him. And fashioned it with a graving tool. After he had made it a mortar calf, he, he fashioned a calf. Uh, I'll just go. And then he said, these are thy gods, O Israel. These things he made. He told Israel, these are your gods, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's in verse 4. Now notice, Aaron is telling these people, these are the gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. He knows better. He is both feet into this apostasy and idolatry. He is leading the people into sin and death. And he said in verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Notice, he made a proclamation to a false god that tomorrow is a feast to a false god that he should not have done. Aaron, the one who's supposed to have been in charge, listened to the people complaining and murmuring and did what he was not supposed to do. He went against the will of God. Think about this, brother leaders, sister leaders. 
when God have you in a position to accomplish and do certain things, and you listen to the murmuring and complaining, as Samuel was told by God, the murmuring and complaining are not against you, Samuel. It's against me. It's a sin against me. God has made it clear that this sin is against him that you're doing. And God said to the church, the wages of sin is death, is death. And they rose up in verse 6. And they rose up early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down and ate. And notice, they are doing for these false gods the same thing that they were doing for the real God, the one true God. Remember when Moses had the young men go and offer peace offerings and sacrifice and offering to God? Now they're doing the same thing relative to this false God. We who are in God need to be aware of who we are worshiping and bow down to. God said, have no other God before me. He said, I am a jealous God. And look what they're doing. They're bowing down to a idol, a God made with hands, a G-O-D, not a capital G-O-D. And we need to be careful of this today. What we make our gods and not knowing that's what we're doing. Aaron received the earrings from their hands and fashioned with a graven tool. He had a tool made that he can form this camp. Aaron built an altar before it and proclaimed that tomorrow was a feast day to the Lord. Now this is an odd idol. Many of us, not in the natural church, do these things. In the spiritual church, you won't do this because you know better. The spiritual church will not do this, but the natural thing will complain will we'll proclaim a feast day for a false God. And we need to be careful and don't fall into that. The people had fallen deep into idolatry. Idolatry is apostasy. And they were led by Aaron. They were led by Aaron, the man who's supposed to be in charge of making sure that they did not do these things. Leaders pay attention. Aaron called this to occur because he listened to the people instead of following the will of God. Declaring a feast day to the Lord was an idol. Notice this. When God put you in position to oversee whatever, and there's sin that arise in the camp, you are responsible for that sin, even more so than the ones who are in sin. God said in the book of, I believe it's uh, Galatians, somewhere over there, the blood, their blood is on your head. You have to watch out now. They credit a handmade idol to God's miracles for them. They credit a handmade idol to God's miracle for them. They have fallen into idolatry. The people sat down to eat, drink, and play. The people sat down to eat, drink, and play. Does this not sound like today's world? People riding up, eat, drink, and play on the Lord's day, early in the morning, and they do it all day, and they don't get tired. But tell them to come do a little service for God. Oh, I'm worn out now. I'll take care of that later. That's the world. That's natural. Eat, drink, and play. You can eat, drink, and play all night on Saturday. Have fun all night. And then you get up on Sunday morning and say, oh, I'm too up. My head is bad. But yet you had fun. And you can't even see and know where you are. Isn't that something? 32, 7, and 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, it's going to get deep now. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
Go get thee down. Why? For thy people, which I brought it out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. See, God don't corrupt you. You corrupt yourself. God don't tempt you. You tempt yourself. But God observed. And he can see. And can hear. And when he was on the top of the mountain, communicating with Moses, God heard them. Notice this now. God heard them while he was on the top of the mountain. And But he didn't tell Moses what they were doing, but God knew what they were doing. They have turn aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them out of where and they made a count you see everything God did for them they forgot everything that God has done for some of us we forgot they created sacrificial things for themselves sometimes sacrificial things for yourself is chasing money that's sacrifice for yourself not God. These be your people, you told Moses. O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now he said, Moses, these are your people. You see, Moses is going to tell him something. Moses is going to say, when he started debating, interceding for God, Moses is going to turn around and say, these are your people. See, when, when, when God is not happy, God is declaring to Moses, these are your people. Why? Because they are now in sin. They have turned from me. Because they have turned from me, they are not my people. They are your people. And this was before Moses started trying to intercede for them. This is the first of four times God had determined to do so. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it's a stiff necked people. But let's look at what God determined to do. In 7 and 8, this is the first of four times that God determined to destroy Israel. He had determined to destroy Israel, the people who had chosen for himself. It's the first four times. You look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. Numbers chapter 15, 20, 20 and 44. God did not tell Moses what the people were doing. He waited a while. He wanted Moses to find out for himself. And Moses didn't find out until he went back down the mountain. God waited a while before telling Moses of what they were doing. God let us know what we're doing in different ways. When we're sitting in a congregation, thinking about our sins of being hid in the darkness, and we sit before a pastor, pastor, comma, quote, a pastor, teacher, God gives these people messages to allow you to know that he see you and he hear you. And you got to get out of there before I kill you. God waited a while Moses before telling Moses what they were doing. God said that the people have corrupted themselves. The same people that you brought out of the land of Egypt. The same people that you brought out of the land of Egypt. Who brought them out of the land of Egypt? God did. But now God is so angry. He said, Moses, you brought them out. God told Moses, they have turned aside quickly. You see, I got to repeat this again. They have made a modern path, calf. No, God, the people made the calf. The people made, now even if Aaron formed the calf, okay? God said the people made the calf. Why? Because Aaron was representing the people. So be careful when you are in a leadership position. Representing the people. So God's going to put you on the top of that list first. And say you're responsible. They worship it. And has sacrificed to it. And they have made them their God. This is a very clear example of backsliding. 
and falling from God's grace and having your name blotted out of the book of life. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 17 is your own personal reading to see how you can get your name blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. And you got to read that yourself because it's, all, it's on you. It's not on the teacher or the pastor. God says, study to show your own self approval. And He said, on all that getting, get understanding. That means you got to look in that book. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, shows how you can get your name blotted out. The book of life. The land book of life. So you, your name is not in there forever. Go to Colossians if you think it is. It can, it can be there forever, but you can have it blotted out. Verse 9 and 10. And Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. By the way, I have seen. He's on top of the mountain. He said, I have, I've, I've looked at them. I've heard them. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. God got some way by which he can see things. He's on top of the mountain, but yet he's with Moses, but he says, I have seen these people. God see us right now. God see what I'm doing standing behind this desk teaching to you. God see you listen, and he want to, and he's reading your heart. Just like God is reading my heart, He's reading yours. So that's why I'm afraid to fool with the word of God. Because God knows when I'm exaggerating and he knows when I'm bringing his word. And I'm afraid to mess with God's word because he sees and he hears. Be careful. Verse 10. Now therefore, listen to this. God telling Moses, now therefore, let me alone that my wrath May I talk against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make it your great nation. Uh oh. Tell me something now that you just learned about God. I'll tell you if you didn't. Sin angers God. Sin brings the wrath of God down on you. Period. In the church, he gave us a way out of his wrath. He says, if you sin, you confess and forsake. Not just confess and do it again. Confess and forsake. We just found that sin angers God to the point that he want to kill you. The graphic, but it's true. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. I have seen this people. Notice the Lord said, I have seen. He didn't say, I'm looking. I'm listening. He said, I have seen. Have seen means he ain't paying no more attention to him. He's done with him. I have. Have is past. I have seen. And is it a stiff-necked people? Stiff-necked. God's description of what he saw in the people. This is God's description of what he saw in the people. What is God's description of what he sees in you? Notice that. God has a description of what he sees. And he's telling us what he saw in his people. Stiff neck refers to hardened or stubborn. They're stubborn and they have got hardened. I'll read Psalm 75 and 5. This is very, very graphic. Psalm 75 and 5. Lift not up your horn. That's your voice. Lift not up your horn. That's your voice. On high. Speak not with a stiff neck. God said, don't even talk to them. Why? Because they're hardened. They're not going to change. So don't waste your breath. 
He said, speak not. Don't raise your voice to them. They won't listen. This is the Bible class. This is not Brother Kennedy. You can read it yourself. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Paul says to the church, you see, to the church, you stiff neck, you stiff neck and what? So turn that in your Bible. You stiff neck and see what Paul said. And uncircumcised in hearts. Uncircumcised in heart. See, your heart got to be clean. Uncircumcised in heart means your heart's dirty. And in your ears. Your heart's dirty and your ears are dirty. Your ears are the wrong thing because you're not clean. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. See, when the word of God come, and you are stiff-necked, according to Paul and according to our Lord and Savior, you're done for. You won't hear. You won't understand. You got to stay in God in order to get to heaven. As Jesus said, you got to enter in straightway. And straightway is him. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. If you try to come any other way, you are as a thief or a robber, and you know you're going to make it. God said to Moses, let me alone. I won't be bothered. I want to kill him. For the sin they have committed against me. Isn't that something? Give me just some intercessory prayer here. Hard intercessory prayer. Do not pray to me anymore at this time. God said, no, don't pray to me anymore at this time. See, there's a point in time when intercessory prayer won't work. They said, we don't have intercessory prayer. Okay, have it. But is it working? God told Moses, do not let me alone. Do not pray to me anymore. At this time, at this time, you see, God had a drop dead day. He, he's not, God got a time when he run out of patience with you. It appears that God did not want to be persuaded to call back his judgment against the children of Israel. That's what it appears like. Why? Because he told Moses, you praying for them, ain't gonna help. I'm done with them. At this point, Moses did not know the sin of Israel as God did. See, God knew what they were doing down there below, but Moses didn't. Moses didn't, because God didn't judge him. Moses only found out when he returned to the camp. That's the next chapter. And so, how serious the sin of injury really was. God wanted his wrath to stay hot against Israel, that he may, he would determine to destroy them. He would determine to destroy them. This proves that God's covenant with Israel was conditioned and based on obedience. The covenant was conditioned and based on obedience. And the New Testament says disobedience is sin. I would say in the New Testament to the church, disobedience is sin. You see how God thinks about disobedience, which is sin? He wanted to destroy an entire nation of people because of disobedience. Isn't that something? God told Moses that the promise I made Abraham would be given to you if I destroyed Israel for their sin against me. Sin against me. You see, when you sin, you sin against God. All this carrying on that they were doing down below, the sinning, God said this is against me. Why? Because it is against his words. It is disobedience to sin. This is a prime example of why disobedience is sin and is a sin is against God. Not, it's not against me. 
you're murmuring and complaining against me if I'm teaching God's word, or a pastor, or Brother Washington, or anyone. If you're murmuring and complaining is because of teaching and preaching God's word, it's against God. It's not against the person you're murmuring and complaining against. You're heaping death on yourself. Then he said, the promise I made to Abraham, I'll give to you. I will make you a great nation. Notice this. I will make you a great nation. God's plan cannot and will not be stopped by sin. What God's plan is, if you are in that plan and you sin, God got somebody to take your place to make sure it get done. If God wants you to deliver word and you mess up, he got somebody else to deliver the same word. So don't think that you can't be replaced. God is telling you right now, right here, Moses, I replace all them with you. So we need to pay attention to what God says in this book. We'll start doing a, we'll stop doing a whole lot of crazy stuff, thinking that we are pleasing God. Verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why does thy wrath wax hot against thy big people? Notice in verse 7, God told Moses, your people. Here Moses saying, these are your people. Notice that. In verse 7, God told Moses, these are thy people. In, in this verse, Moses is telling God, these are your people. You brought them out. So think about that now. Why? Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. This is Moses' first intercession. See, Moses is going to have to convince God to change his mind. See, when we do intercessory prayer, we just, the Lord this and Lord that. You got to have some reason to have an intercession. It ain't just mouthing words. I did an intercessory prayer for you. It don't work like that. You got to have some specific that you are interceding about, some specific words as to how you make the intercession prayer. Notice this. This is Moses' first intercessory part of the children of Israel. Moses besought. That means he asked him earnestly. He begged him. Intercessory prayer is begging. Begging the Lord. Asking him earnestly. It ain't those list light stuff that we do. It's heavy. The Lord, his God, and ask God. Notice he's asking him. He ain't telling him in his intercessory prayer. Prayer, he's asking him something very specific as to why you should change your mind. You see, why are you so angry against your people? No, see, your people that you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Now, Moses is turning it back on God. Why are you so angry at the people that you brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand? Note in verse 7 that God called them Moses' people. In verse 11, Moses called them God's people. You see, Moses got some, some thing that he can remind God with. See, he, Moses knew that these was actually God's people, not his. And Moses is taking the time to remind God of this. You see what I'm saying? Verse 12. Wherefore, now, this is what he's doing to convince God in his intercessory. Listen to what Moses is doing. He's reminding God about something. Wherefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, or mischief, he bring them out to slay them in the mountain and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from that fierce wrath and repent of the evil against thy people. Your people. See, Moses got an argument here. He's not just talking in prayer. He's going to God with a legitimate argument. Just like in a court. 
In a court, you got to have a legitimate argument to get somebody off. Moses has got a legitimate argument going here. What was going on? The argument of Moses to God about the children of Israel was what will the Egyptians say about how you brought them, the people out? That's an argument. What did, what did the Egyptians say? Why you bring them out? And you was able to lead them, and you were not able to lead them to the promised land? He said, the Egyptians are going to be able to say this if you do what you're going to do. The Egyptians will say that for mischief, you brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to remove them from the face of the earth. See, now, if you do this, the Egyptians got something to say, you did this deliberately. That was your initial plan. See, Moses got an argument here. The Egyptians know all that God did to get the, the children out of Egypt. Now they're out here, and God, according to the Egyptians, going to do the same thing they want to do, kill them all. They got an argument. Moses asked God to turn away from his anger. Notice God is angry now at sin. He asked God to turn away from his anger and repent. Change your mind, please. Change your mind. Of this evil. Notice he said, of this evil. That means iniquity. Against your people. Not my people, your people. This shows that sin angers God and can provoke him to wrath. Sin angers God and can and will provoke them to wrath. When you look at the communion service that's going to be held Sunday, one of the things in the ceremony says, for this cause, many are asleep. And those are the ones who take this, this communion with sin on them, without confession, without getting things straight with their brethren, getting right. The Bible says, for this cause, some are asleep. I mean, you're dead. So you got to get understanding of the word of God and quit thinking it's just a book. It's a fact. It's what God wants us to know. It's what God wants us to do. And you got to know it and understand it for yourself. I can't get you to understand it. I can't get you to, under, to know it. The pastor can't get you to understand it. The pastor can't get you to know it. How do you get understanding and to know it? Paul told us. Study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth of workmen that need not be ashamed. Now we go back to when Philip was in the doing a uh, revival and the Ethiopian eunuch was out in the desert on his carriage. A very smart man, an intelligent man. We know he was smart because he was charged of the queen's treasure. And God, through the Holy Ghost, had Philip stop what he's doing and go out and meet this man in the desert. Philip didn't know what he was going to see or what he was going to do, but he saw this eunuch riding on the carriage, and what he was doing? He was reading the book of Isaiah. He was reading the Bible. And Philip saw him and stopped him. Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, understand what I read? Now, this is a man who was very thought. He was in charge of the queen's children. Had to be an accountant or something. He was no dummy. And Philip said, do you understand what you read? Like most of us today, you yeah, I graduated from college. What do you mean, do I understand? I was a cum laude and all this kind of stuff. I understand all of this stuff. This man didn't say that. He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And when Philip heard that, he got up on the carriage. And from the same 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, he taught unto him Jesus, a smart man. And immediately his heart was open. How do we know that? Because when it was passing by some water, the unit said, wait a minute, is that water over there? Then if water over there, what hinders me to be baptized? So what you see here is in that 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, baptism is also taught. That he understood. 
that he understood. Great example of all that getting, get understanding. Now, if you want to know some history about it, when he went back to Ethiopia today, in Ethiopia, there's a Christian church called Coptic. The Ethiopian Coptic Church is a Christian church. And history, I've said, it was brought back from a faraway land by a keeper of the Queen's treasure. Isn't that something? That's the Bible. Well, let's go on. Verse 12 and 13. Wherefore around, wherefore should the Egyptian speak and say, for well, mistress, that's what he did, right? Is that right? Would you do that? Would you take that position and argue with God? Moses didn't argue with God. He had facts to present to God about his people that God already knew. That he already knew. That's intercessory repair, y'all. Let's look at 32 and 14. And the Lord repented of the evil he had thought to do to his people. Moses' argument was so strong and so sharp that the Lord repented of what he had intended to do. Let's look a, a little bit ahead. When Moses went down the mountain, verse 15, same chapter, I'm just giving you an advance notice here. When Moses went down the mountain, he saw what was going on. And it grieved him. And we look at some, when he approached Aaron. He said, Aaron, what's going on here? Aaron started blaming the people. When you studied that, Aaron started blaming the people. Moses said, you were in charge. You're responsible. And you're blaming the people. Moses took that golden calf. He burned it. He crushed it up into powder. And he put it in the water. And he made the people, the children of Israel, drink that water. Now, one last thing we need to know. Moses called the people and said, who's on the Lord's side? There's only one group responding, Levi's family. And what did he do? He told Levi's family, who responded to be on the Lord's side, put the swords on. And I want you to go out there and everyone that did not declare that they were on the Lord's side, slay them. On that same day, Levi's family, clan, slew 3,000 of those who did not turn to the Lord. Study that, y'all. You'll find out we need to know a lot more about God. Thank you.